Hey guys, what's up? By Sec the Tron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And in this one, I'm talking about four go to Town Hall 10 attack strategies from the most recent war um, in CWO. As you can see, great war from us, only one Town Hall 10 left standing as a result of three 10v10 triples, which you guys will all be seeing. And the other clan, Gude, Gudesborg, I. Kriga, sorry, I know they're Swedish, I can't pronounce that very well. Uh, they didn't quite put up as many stars, but they also had one 10v10 triple. It was pretty nice, they were also gonna show. So, um, good week one victory for us. Let's talk about these four different strategies. All of them are popular, I see them all relatively equally in terms of the frequency, some more than others, but they're all um, the go-tos, and it's rare to see a Town Hall 10 attack that uses a strategy other than this to get the three star, none off the top of my head that I can think of. So the first one here is, I call it the Witch Bowler, the Weebo, um, you can call it what you want, but it is Devin here giving us a good example of it. And this is a solid max Town Hall 10 base, nothing to to, uh, to laugh at, anything like that. Very good base. Um, the thing that makes it vulnerable to this type of strategy is the Inferno Towers. The entire goal is to get in there and get both Inferno Towers taken out. Now, uh, Devin is doing a Queen Walk on one side because I believe there's a Lava Hound in the CC, which pretty much means do a Queen Walk on one side, let her take stuff out. Um, hopefully you don't have to invest any spells in her, just her ability when she needs it. That should be enough if you time it right and she goes in at the same time as the Kill Squad. Uh, healers, Witches, and Bowlers on the other side. And then that Jump Spell, or two Jump Spells rather, basically going to try to get in there, get both Inferno Towers taken out, and they're in those little compartments that makes it easy just to jump on in, get the King in there, get some Bowlers in there, and get the job done, get those Infernos. And once the Infernos go down, you have both of them, you have the core kind of cleared out. As soon as that Expo goes down, the core is pretty much done. Then there's just that shell of buildings around the outside, and it typically will come down to your Queen, and then the Witches and the Bowlers, whatever's <clears throat> left on the other side of the base. I think it was a very good choice to use some healers on the, um, the bottom force of Witches, because oftentimes they'll die too easily to point defense, splash damage, as those skeletons start to die as well. So the healers did a great job keeping those witches up and tanking, uh, getting all the way 180 degrees around the base before they do eventually die, but by then, the queen's there to clean things up. So look for a more compact base, smaller compartments, and those inferno towers can both be jumped through, um, and that can be a very easy base to three star, even if it's completely maxed out like that base we just saw. So moving on um, to some slightly lower level Town Hall 10s, which are where you tend to see more 10v10 triples. And this one is Devin again, his other Town Hall 10 account. So he's he's really running those 10s and doing it well. Uh, two, two for four, I think, this war, which is an extremely high hit rate for a Town Hall 10. So good job to him. And uh, this next attack by him was a hog attack. I think this one, not as popular as the first one, not gonna be as popular as the miners we'll take a look at either, but still good against um, certain bases. And I love how he exploits the golem CC. The, the reason people put a golem in the CC is to defend against miners. So what this does is it opens up more possibilities with the queen joining that kill squad because the kill squad will kill that golem much more quicker, uh, much, much quickly, much more quickly, there we go, because the king, the bowlers, everything will target it, which allows the queen to be able to sit back once the golem's down, and in this case, take out both inferno towers. So some great base identification here, realizing that both infernos can be reached by the queen if it's done correctly. Uh, two golem kill squad, bowlers, the king, a uh, pretty heavy kill squad, but that is because he's getting both Infernos, so the value is there, means he doesn't have to bring a freeze, just can bring those three heals and keep those hogs healed throughout the base. Uh, quite a few defenses they have to get through, but without any Inferno Towers, this one makes it much easier. So awesome attack here to Devin, the hogs make their way through under that last heal. The queen does go down, but the hogs will finish off the, uh, the attack here. So look for that golem in the CC as a possible uh, benefit to your attack in terms of bringing the queen in your kill squad because the, the lava hound won't be there to distract the queen and make her useless like it often is um, if you put the queen in your kill squad but instead she'll be able to sit back as soon as that golem's done 
and take out whatever's there, in this case, both Infernos. So very nice uh, stuff there. Now this next one is the Minor Attack, and once again, bottom Town Hall 10 bases, it's almost automatic to hit them with Miners. So if you are a low-level Town Hall 10, especially in um, CWL-type matchups where you see people really getting those three stars on Town Hall 10s, look to have a good anti-minor base. Maybe if the demand is there, I'll try to build one for you guys to give a good example. There's a few key things like having ground skeletons, having some storages in your base, not just defenses, stuff like that, that I can elaborate on more if needed. But those bottom Town Hall 10s are very popular for this strategy. We have Boudreaux, who's been a consistent Town Hall 10 force for us the last few weeks in terms of 10v10 triples, getting another one here. And I love the uh, balloons in the haste, then the baby dragon behind. It might seem like, okay, why is he doing this? Uh, why is he investing all this? He's not getting the Inferno Tower taken out. But the reason is, well, there's so many reasons. First, it funnels the queen. He has to funnel the queen anyway. It funnels the king and the... Um, the king walk around the outside of the base on the other side, and it allows him to drop a test miner to try to trigger a giant bomb, which he does, and trigger one of those ground skellies to let his queen deal with. So he's getting so much value, plus he clears out a direct path for his miners to directly target that inferno tower. And by the way, any giant bombs that are behind the inferno tower don't matter at all, because as soon as the miners take out the inferno tower, they dip underground and they leave that compartment. And as long as they're not in that compartment, the giant bombs in there won't trigger. They can't detonate with a wall between them and the miners. So basically what it allows him to do is let those miners take out the Inferno Tower quickly, efficiently, without taking damage. That's what you want to have. He used a Rage spell in the core, which I'm still not sold on, especially with the amount of miners he had. I would have liked another heal or a Rage for the King and some bowlers with the King or something. I'm not sold on the raging up the miners, especially against lower level Town Hall 10s, and there's not a whole lot in the core, just like the CC, um, a few defenses that he was raging them over. There's a time and a place for the rage, I think, with the miners. This may not have been it. That being said, the base was still crushed, but typically you want to look for, or the miners going to engage the um, Inferno Tower, maybe the Queen, some Skellies a lot of high HP, just a lot of stuff at once. I don't think that was really the situation um, when he dropped the Rage, but I think it was nonetheless a good attack and a great example of a, a consistent Town Hall 10 strategy against these lower level bases especially, which can be used on max bases as well as any attack strategy can that you guys are going to see today. So last one here is one by, we'll call them GK, um, just to to not butcher their name again. Um, this is a La Luna attack, and it comes in many different shapes and sizes, but the basic principles are going to be the same. You have to probably be the most creative in this attack strategy, more so than any other attack, because you have to find a creative way to use your heroes, get the important stuff like the air defenses, the Inferno Towers, the Queen, the CC if needed, but you have to do it with the least amount of troop space as possible and the least amount of spell space to save that for your Laloon. So I think it takes the most creativity. This was a nice queen charge on uh, Devin appearing for his third time in the video, this time getting the shorter end of the stick and um, gets the Inferno charge. Very good stuff there. Um, just wall breakers the queen in and she'll actually turn around and get an air defense afterwards. So incredible value for that queen. You can see coming around the corner, she'll get the air defense up top too. Sends in the kill squad for, I think, the queen and some good archer towers, good valuable defenses there. Doesn't actually get an air defense, or maybe he gets one air defense with that push there. I think he might have gotten one. But the important thing is he's clearing out the queen, he's getting some good loon pathing, making it more of a direct line rather than a blob. I talk about this for hog pathing too. You want more of a direct line that's not too wide, not going to make your balloon spread out and backtrack. Um, typically the width of a heal spell or a rage spell, I believe they're the same size. That's the width you want for your balloon pathing more or less or your hog pathing. Uh, maybe maybe you can go a little bit wider with your loon pathing, but you want not an entire circular base left up. You want a path, and the kill squad created a good path for his loons, sent them through, dropped the rages, the heals, the hastes, and it was just over. Look at all those balloons left up. Awesome attack. 
and this is our number 14 base. So of course, going to be the target of pretty much any 10 v 10 triple attempt because the the lower 10 uh, the lower town hall tens are always going to be a little bit easier. But um, not doing it with miners this time, doing it with La Loon, which I like to see. Not the most popular strategy, not as much so as miners or the witch bowler, but it is a good strategy uh, nonetheless. Especially as bases start to defend against other stuff, it opens up opportunities to use air troops like you guys saw here. So thanks for watching, more content coming out soon, and good job to everyone in One Hive Genesis with the week one win in CWL Premiere. You guys will see week two much more in depth now that I'm back from vacation. So that will do it, see you guys soon. Bisectatron out.